Hello, this is Salvatore Vinciguerra. Welcome to this video on the Peabody Essex Museum in Salem, Massachusetts. The Peabody Essex Museum has the distinction of being the oldest continuously operating and collecting museum in the United States. It was originally founded in 1799 by the East Indian Marine Society, and I'll be telling you a little bit more about the history of the museum as we walk through it. This is the first art exhibit that I got to see at the museum. It is by Hans Hoffman, and it's called The Nature of Abstraction. Hans Hoffman is celebrated for his exuberant colorful paintings and influential art schools that helped to define a new generation of art in America. Hoffman's career as a painter began in the virtual artistic period of early 20th century Europe, but was disrupted by World War I. He turned to teaching in Munich for several years until an invitation to teach at the University of California, Berkeley enabled him to escape Nazi occupation in World War II. In America, Hoffman rejoiced in the freedom to return to his painting practice. Hoffman's principles of artistic expression played pivotal roles in the development of modern abstraction, a new visual language that moved beyond traditional representation. He believed that a picture should not merely be a mirror onto the physical world, but should present a new reality of its own, existing nowhere else. Using nature as his constant source of inspiration, his art captured a fresh spirit of creative impulse. While teaching in Provincetown in New York between 1935 and 1957, Hoffman actively refined his painting practice. He experimented with different techniques in order to create movement and depth within the two-dimensional picture plane or surface of the painting. He created a set of core principles of dynamic expression as the foundation for his exploration. Line, shape, color, and push-pull, his famous phrase. Often inspired by exchanges with his students, Hoffman received and cultivated new ideas as much as he taught his own principles. His openness to style, evolution, and emotive handling of paint eventually led him to create fully abstracted works. Renowned for its expansive holdings of decorative arts and paintings, the Peabody Essex Museum's American Art Collection spans four centuries of creative expression in the United States. Rooted in our historic holdings that celebrate the rich and diverse artistic and cultural heritages of Essex County, Massachusetts, the collection has continued to grow and embrace a broader representation of the art of this country. Together, these works tell compelling stories of American life and the ongoing cultural exchanges between the people of the region, the country, and the wider world. As I go upstairs, this is another ongoing exhibit at the museum. This is called Double Happiness, Celebration in Chinese Art. Come and experience the liveliness of a drinking party, the opulence of a royal wedding and poetic evocation of spring on a delicate dish. With more than 30 highlights from the museum's wide-ranging Chinese collection spanning 3,000 years, this exhibition celebrates China's artistic achievements crystallized in seasonal festivals, religious ceremonies, and celebrations. Discover plants and animals, myths and symbols, and decipher the Chinese character for double happiness.
This next piece of art is very interactive. It is called Figurehead 2.0 by Charles Sanderson. Sanderson created Figurehead for the museum in 2010. Working at the intersection of visual art and computer programming, he scanned handwriting from the museum's vast collection of ship's logs and sailor's journals. Then he generated specific trajectories for the words across this venerable hall and over its historic figureheads using logarithms based on patterns he observes in nature, like the movement of ants or bodies passing through water. For the present installation, he has incorporated technologies that have become commonplace in their intervening years, including real-time location feeds of global ship traffic and weather patterns, as well as cameras that detect visitors' movements. Is this the face of the leader? This monumental steel sculpture depicts Fidel Castro, the authoritarian leader who dominated Cuban life and culture from 1959 until his death in 2016. But without his trademark revolutionary cap and cigar, the rusted visage could only be mistaken for a recently unearthed antiquity. Do you see the people of Cuba in this sculpture? Look closer, however, and your perception may change. Jan Capote welded eminence from hundreds of immobilized rusted door hinges that he acquired from fellow citizens throughout Cuba, transforming a portrait of Castro into a collective image of the island's people and their struggle for change. In 1992, the Stephen Phillips Library of the Peabody Museum and the James Duncan Phillips Library of the Essex Institute merged to create the Phillips Library, a unique research institution with deep ties to local, regional, national, and international art, culture, history, and literature. Its holdings focus on rare books and manuscripts, including logbooks from the Salem ships that traveled the world and important collections relating to China, India, Japan, and Korea. The library also preserves important documents from the history of Salem, Essex County, and the rest of the country. As you can see, some of the galleries in the museum are quite extensive, and I would highly suggest that if you live in the area, to buy a membership, and that way you can come back and really focus on walking through these galleries at your own pace, and you don't have to be rushed to see everything inside. And they do have ongoing exhibits, which are there all the time. And then there are changing exhibits, like the Hans Hoffman exhibit that I showed you. And this way, every time you visit the museum, it's fresh and exciting, and there's always something new to see. This is a very intriguing exhibit at the museum. It's called Cleopatra's Barge. This installation recreates the grandeur of the main salon on Cleopatra's Barge, America's first private ocean-going yacht. It was commissioned by George Crowninshield Jr. and built in Salem in 1816. Many of the salon's elaborate original furnishings are featured here and represent the best of American decorative art from the period.
This is a beautiful chamber organ built in 1827 by George Hook. You know I'm a music lover and I have my degrees in music education, so I'm going to highlight some of these beautiful musical instruments that they have at the museum. This is one of the interactive exhibits at the museum, and it's called Archive of the Mind by Kim Susha. Choose your clay with the help of a museum attendant and take a seat at the table. Clay is elemental, from the earth. The artist also sees it as a container. Initially, it holds water, which makes the clay pliable. As the clay dries, it stores the shape, the intention, and the energy of participants. Quietly focus on rolling the clay into a smooth ball. Push it into the center of the table where you're done. Forming the ball of clay can have a calming meditative effect. The balls you make evolve around the forms of the planets or atoms. More of the directions include that by sitting at the communal table and adding your gesture to those of the fellow visitors, you are demonstrating how small individual actions can accumulate and become powerful over time. Look, I stumbled back into the China exhibit and I found double happiness. This is the Dottie Brown Art and Nature Center, and it showcases original exhibitions that investigate our interconnections with nature through contemporary art, mobile objects, and interactive experiences. This is great for children of all ages, and it's very family friendly. They have many different hands-on exhibits, and children of all ages can make art in this particular exhibit. One of the most enjoyable things about visiting this museum is the flow and movement that you can have going from one gallery to the other gallery and how sometimes they're connected and sometimes they're not, but they do connect well. And so it is quite enjoyable to walk from one room into another and, you know, just explore it the way it's meant to be. This exhibit is called Where the Questions Live by artist Wes Sam Bruce. This exhibit adventurously investigates the connections, metaphors, and experiences of human beings within the natural world. Sam Bruce creates a site-specific multi-sensory installation that functions as an enveloping world within a world. The Peabody Essex Museum's Maritime Art Collection is one of the finest in our country. It frames the sea as an enduring source of opportunity as well as peril, a force that inspires creativity and innovation and encourages engagement with the wider world. The installation offers a global perspective on our creative response to the sea, from a 17th century brass Pakistani astrolabe to Valerie Haggerty's monumental shipwreck on war with barnacles, and artworks that reflect Salem's rich history of maritime trade and exploration. 
Immersive digital media amplify compelling stories that lay behind unassuming objects, like a calendar stick from 1803 whose carved notches record the long days that Rhode Island native James Drone spent shipwrecked and left for dead on Tristan de Conha, a remote specific island in the South Atlantic. The Fashion and Design Gallery invites visitors to consider that we are designing creatures who continually manipulate, respond to, and mold our changing world. Whether designing our self-adornment or for use, this installation unifies two traditionally disparate collective fields to better understand what underlies our motivations and capacity for designing ourselves and the world around us. Ensembles from the Iris Upfield Rare Bird or Fashion Collection celebrate the exuberant remixing and inventive styling of one of the world's most prominent fashion icons, while constellations of unique and culturally significant works of design, fashion, and textiles explore distinctive and resourceful forms of creative expression. In a different video, I'm going to be sharing with you the Yin Yu Tang Chinese House, which is a part of the Peabody Essex Museum. So please look out for that video, and I'll try to put a card in this video so that you can go ahead and link to it, and I'll also put it in the description box when it's published. You have to schedule this tour separately than just visiting the Peabody Essex Museum, so that's something to look out for if you really want to experience this the day that you're going to be visiting. And it is a 200-year-old Chinese house that was brought to America and re-erected at the museum. So it's a very special tour, and look out for that video. This is Salvatore Benziguera. Thank you for watching this video on the Peabody Essex Museum in Salem, Massachusetts. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to this channel, and have a great day. Thank you.